although this show will mainly cover stories from the UK, I can't ignore our very normal cousins over in the States this week. Yesterday, the Supreme Court voted to overturn Roe v. Wade in a move that will see states able to completely ban and criminalize abortion. In a tweet from President Biden, he writes, Make no mistake, today's overruling of Roe v. Wade is the culmination of a deliberate effort over decades to upset the balance of our law. It's a realization of an extreme ideology and a tragic error by the Supreme Court. Roe v. Wade was a piece of legislation brought in by the Supreme Court in 1973 that allowed the Constitution to protect the rights of pe pregnant women and therefore their right to have an abortion if they so wished. Therefore, no state could outright ban abortion, although obviously in recent years we have seen a lot of pushback and tougher restrictions being brought in by Republican states. The Supreme Court now overturning this have essentially said that no, they don't think it's a constitutional right for women to make their own choice and have autonomy over their own body. So now essentially states will be able to make the choice for them. And as I said, we're going to see a huge increase in the number of states that are going to ban abortion with criminal consequences um, to those that obtain, but also those that assist with abortion. Rightly so, people from across the world are outraged. This will not stop abortion. This will only stop safe abortion. Cases of rape or incest are most likely not going to be exempt from criminal punishment. Neither will medical treatments following complications with pregnancy or miscarriage, for example, if a woman had an ectopic pregnancy or if the fetus died somewhere along during the pregnancy and a woman would need a medical abortion, that is not going to be included in any form of exemption, which means we are, women are going to be killed. Women will die. There's no other no way to put it, to be completely honest. Um, many Democrats are now saying uh, that this is why we need to get out and vote. Obviously not us, but in America. This is why we need to get out and vote. Um, but I was wondering, maybe, Curtis, if you could explain why, when they have a Democrat president, that this was still able to happen. Can I kind of get your thoughts on this? Right, okay. So, yes, you're right. The Democrats have the House, um, the Senate, and the presidency. Yet yeah, they did nothing to codify uh, Roe v. Wade. Now... Democrats have had the power for, what, 50, 60 years to enshrine this into law. Uh, Nancy Pelosi once said quite recently that uh, being pro-choice is, is hurting the Democratic Party. Um, and you've got to remember, there are many um, pro-lifers in the Democratic Party. Now, what makes this so disgusting is that Democrats have used Roe v. Wade as a political ploy to get votes. Nancy Pelosi is sent, out, uh, sent out a fundraising email, um, literally what hours after the decision, encouraging those to vote in November, saying that women's rights are on the ballot paper. That's, that's disgraceful because what the Democrats are doing and what they've done for, for years is they purposely made sure that Roe v. Wade wasn't codified. They wanted the idea that abortions could be banned. They wanted that risk to be there so they could use it as a wedge issue for votes. So saying you should go out and vote uh, to protect women's rights is complete crap. It is it's crap because the people did already vote. They voted for Joe Biden in the general election and it secured a majority of House Senate of the Democrats and obviously you've got a Democratic presidency. So yeah, RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the, the, the liberal icon, should I say, um, she was a Democratic justice and she refused to retire, because she, she was old. Mm -hmm. She refused to retire under Barack Obama. And a lot of people predicted that she might die under a Trump presidency, which is what happened. And the aftermath of that is that Trump was then allowed to replace her with a GOP justice. Had she put her ego aside, um, allowed for a younger democratic justice, then Roe v. Wade would have not been overturned. So I think that Democrats are just as bad as the Republicans in this. I think that the policies are, are very similar. One of them says they care about women's rights. One of them overtly says they don't care. Um, but really, what's the point in being told you need to go out and vote when the, the, the people have already done that and nothing is being done? You already have voted. It's, it's, to me, that doesn't actually give incentive to vote for mm. them again. Because if you voted Democrat last time and... This is now this you know 
has been allowed to happen, in my mind, I'd be thinking, well, why, why would I vote for you again? Because surely you had the power to do something. I gave you the power to do something and you chose not to take it. That's not an incentive to vote for them again, in my opinion. If we were still under a Trump presidency or general Republican presidency in general, then yeah, absolutely. They've got, they've got that driving force behind them to say, you know, look what they've done. It's so awful. Blah, 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 blah. You need to vote for us. But they don't have that leverage this time. They are in charge. Um, even in Barack Obama's presidency and during his presidency, as you said, like RBG didn't uh, retire, but he even said that abortion rights or, you know, writing this into law essentially so it couldn't, you know, be overturned in this way wasn't a priority for him. But women this is this is a, a women's rights issue this is a human rights issue and it then leads on to other um constitutions or other other rules other laws also being uh questioned because the i can't remember what his name is justice clarence uh thomas is clarence that thomas, yeah. yeah he has now basically said we can put the actual quote up on the screen, but he's essentially said that he believes we they now need to um, be considering the rights around contraception, the rights around um, same-sex marriage, and the rights around um, basically consensual private sexual relations. Um, so it, this is not just a problem for women this is not just a women's issue because it's around you know we're talking about abortion we're talking about people who can get pregnant people with wombs and uteruses this is going to be you know an avalanche for other other issues um to to come up essentially and be questioned um obviously in america as well we also have the issue that you know guns essentially now have more rights than women. A cluster of sows has more rights now than a live grown female person. Um, you know, just a few weeks ago, we saw another mass shooting and, you know, more children heartlessly killed when it could have been prevented. Um, and rightly so, it brings up conversations of gun laws, gun control, and a lot of Republicans will run with the sort of argument that banning guns won't stop people getting their hands on guns, but they kind of seemingly have you know, been quite happy to ignore that argument when it comes to abortions. As I said earlier, banning abortions is not going to stop abortions happening. Um, and ironically, they call themselves pro-life, but they like i said they're given more rights oh, to a gun it, yeah they're given more rights to a gun an object than a person they're giving more rights to a cluster of cells than a person and this comes from a country that doesn't even have universal health care or a decent welfare system i mean have you got anything that you kind of want to add on to that well this is fundamentally the thing about conservatives they're not consistent it's like yes we we are pro-life, we care about an unborn fetus, but as soon as they're born, that's it, they don't care. Yeah. They're happy to decimate the welfare state. Yeah. They are vehemently against uh, socialised healthcare. Um, you know, they, they wrap themselves in uh, patriotism, yet when veterans come home, they don't care, they don't support them, they don't fund public services to make sure their mental health is okay or they've got a, you know, a fucking house. So they don't care about these things. They don't care about life. What this is, is harking back to the uh, ultra-conservative uh, religious extremism. The US is essentially a theocracy. It's supposed to be a secular nation where you're, you, know, you govern based on the rights of people rather than religion. Now, our country is supposed to be a Christian nation. However, no nation should be based on any particular religion. It's secular. You have freedom from religion and you have freedom to practice religion, whether you're a Muslim, you're Jewish, or you're Christian. But in the US, and especially the Republican Party, want it to be a theocracy where they govern based on the Bible. Yeah. Um, which is funny because the Bible is completely contradictory because thousands of different people contributed to it over a long period of time. So yeah, there's a, it comes from their obviously 
deeply held ultra conservative beliefs, but also quite clearly it is misogynistic. It's a way to control women because they don't apply the same logic as you alluded to guns. Now, the, the argument is we cannot ban guns because people are going to get their hands on it anyway. Well, please be consistent. Apply that logic to abortion, because if you make abortion illegal, it won't stop abortions. It will mean that people are going to get illegal abortions. It's going to be less safe and people are going to die. Same with drugs. You cannot legislate drugs out of existence. People are going to do it regardless. So you need to see this as a health issue not a moral issue. And there are many people who might personally be uncomfortable with, abor with abortions, um, but might still then say, but I still am pro-choice because I believe that women should have a right to use. That's absolutely fine. I mean, I'm particularly pro-choice even in my moral compass, but you know, people might not support that, but they still say women's rights to choose. But the US and the way the, the uh, Supreme Court of Govern is essentially four or five people um, unelected, by the way, no one gets a vote on it, yeah. to control the lives of millions of people. And let's also not forget, it's not just about women. Let's, let's remember our trans comrades and trans men. Yeah. They're going to be in danger too. So anyone who can give birth, anyone can, can get pregnant. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a gateway to ripping up um, the rights of minorities, and it won't stop there. They're going to come for trans people, gay people, lesbians, non-binary, they're going to come for all of them. Yeah. And as you said, like, it's a health issue, but it is also a class issue because if any of these people who have gone and made these decisions, if their daughter, family member, anyone got into a situation where they needed an abortion, they will be able to still get one safely without consequence because they've got the money to be able to do it. This is going to force so many already you know poor people into even more desperate situations and you know as we said before you you can't force people to give birth and have children when you're then also not going to provide them with decent health care maternity or paternity pay any sort of welfare um or you know benefits or anything like that most people work multiple jobs anyway you know, trying to feed themselves, let alone feeding a child that they didn't want to have, couldn't abort for obviously now legal reasons. And it's just called, cool. it's, it's making poor people poorer. It's pushing them into more desperate situations, making their situations even worse. Um, and yeah, like you said, it, they're going to come for other, other people's rights, other minority groups' rights. Um, obviously in this country, there isn't really as much of an appetite for that kind of conversation around abortion or pro-choice, pro-life. Um, we generally, as Brits, kind of take that more like mm. stiff upper lip approach, which obviously is not really healthy. Um, but we do tend to follow in the political footsteps of the state. We see a lot of mirrored policies and politics. Um, so do you think we should be worried about, you know, the possibility that this is going to open up the conversation more so in this country and that, you know, is there a, a chance that our rights could also be reversed here in the UK? Uh, well, ask me a few years ago and I probably would have said no. Um, and, I, and I'm actually surprised that Roe v Wade has actually been overturned. Mm -hmm. I thought we've, we've made so much progress that the GOP, right-wing parties, conservatives, don't have enough political capital to do this. It turns out they don't need any political capital. They're just going to do it. So, yeah, I am very worried. Now, the British people are entirely sensible on this issue. I know if you poll them on many other things, you might think, fuck me, they're not sensible on, on certain issues. But on this, uh, the British people got it bang on. Around 90% of the British people believe that women should have a right to choose. They support abortions or they support the right to choose. Not necessarily support abortions, right? But they're on the right side of this. Yeah. However... What's happening now is there's a big export of US debates coming to this country. Now, if you look at the, the new sort of media we're getting on our, on our TVs recently, like GB News, you're getting more of Piers Morgan on Talk TV. Even if you just watch it, look at this studio, look at the aesthetics of it. They look very Americanized. Yeah. The, 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 the debate format is also very much Americanized. So in that sense, it's really creeping in. Now, there was a story I covered... Um, fairly recently that someone was going to appear on the BBC and talking about you know abortion 
and was essentially going to say, look, the British people, the, the debate is settled, the British people on the right side of the history of this, thank God we don't have to go through this debate, yeah. um, etc. The BBC then decided to cancel her, her appearance and bring on a pro and con, basically, argument. argument. Yes, yeah, so they wanted to get someone who's a pro-lifer, uh, forced birth, as I say, and a pro-choicer, and they were going to debate. Well, the BBC, you know, which our taxpayers are funding, is copying Fox News now. Yeah. We don't need to have this forced debate on whether it's right or wrong. We've already debated that. So this, in this country, the mainstream media is drumming up culture wars and creating a debate where there doesn't need to be one. Yeah. Now, when it comes to positive change, that comes from the grassroots. But if you notice, when there's reactionary... Uh, when there's uh, racism, that comes from the top. Just like Donald Trump. Now, racism existed before Donald Trump. Many liberals might think it didn't, but it clearly did. However, the difference between Donald Trump is that he overtly would say racist things, xenophobic things. Mm -hmm. And the he geo... opened a platform to allow others to say those kinds of things as well. Yeah. That they were already thinking. They were, yeah, essentially they are already thinking, but political correctness kept this at bay. Mm -hmm. People might be thinking it, but they essentially said, well, I better not say that. That's good. I don't want people overtly saying racist things in public. And even the, Dem the Democrats and the GOP were supporting policies that were definitely racist. Um, the GOP would still pretend that they weren't racist. Now, Trump changed that. What happened? That means hate crimes had peaked. That gave conservative supporting outlets, right-wing outlets, people like Ben Shapiro and, and others were now becoming more and more overt in what they were thinking. And they felt, actually, there is a space I can voice my real opinions. That's really worrying. And the same thing can happen here. Boris Johnson is like, you know, kind of like the British version of Trump, where he's saying more and more um, extreme things. And whilst the British people might not necessarily believe that, over time, if they get a license from their politicians, if we get a license from our presidents and prime ministers, you're going to see more and more of this happening. So yes, I think a debate surrounding abortion seems to be settled in this country, but we have to make sure we defend these rights because it's not a foregone conclusion.